Okay, um, so this, uh, these tutorial videos, I'm just going to try to duplicate um, some of the things that we covered in class, uh, just in case you need some additional review or you get stuck on a part of the process. So um, with the t tutorial videos I'm posting right now, um, I'll just try to go over the things that we covered on Wednesday in terms of modeling in Rhino, um, building our virtual crit space, and then bringing the models into that space. So we'll start by opening up the Rhino 6 application here, um, just double-clicking on the icon on your desktop. And then um, you'll notice as I these may not pop up for you when you're opening up the software. Um, I'm running some CAM software inside of Rhino. Um, so there's a pop up window for this one up here, and I can just close without um, on the Jano opening up. And then, um, <clears throat> we'll also close the Rhino CAM browser just there on the left hand side of the screen. Um, once I open up Rhino, um, go ahead and you can just maximize the Rhino window on your desktop, give you a little bit more space to navigate and look around. And then um, you can just double check if you didn't have time if the template window passed quickly um, as you were opening up the software. I can just double check and make sure what units that I'm using to model in by just left clicking on the file menu. Coming down here to the Properties tab, left clicking there, and then selecting Units here, and I'm just making sure that I'm actually modeling in inches today. Um, you can choose any units to model in, and this just means the units that I select here when I enter a value, if I'm drawing a surface, um, drawing geometry, when I enter a value in the command line, that the number of units that that value is describing. So I made a sphere that was three something across, you know, this would change it between being inches in the model or meters or three light years, in which way you want to model in light years, give it as a reason for. Um, so this looks good. I'm modeling in inches. I'm just going to go ahead and click OK. Um, and then now in the Rhino workspace, this, we talked about this last class also. Um, so right now, by default, the um, workspace is split into these four screens. And these are basically just four camera angles looking at the same kind of point in space from different directions. And you can leave the workspace set up like this. Um, you can always move those uh, windows around by just rolling the arrow over that edge and you can drag it left to right. Um, but I actually prefer to just maximize one of these windows um, to work in. So you can do that just by rolling the arrow over the little tab in the top left hand corner, right clicking and then left clicking on maximize. And now we're just looking on the top view. Um, again, as we're navigating in the Rhino workspace, you know, I'll refer to, um, we're using this three button mouse, so I'll refer to left click, right click on the three button mouse, and then the center scroll wheel button. And right now I'm just zooming in and out by pointing the arrow over the place that I want to zoom in or out from and then rolling the scroll wheel button in or out. So you can just play with that for a second. Um, and then if I want to change orientation, I can just go click on the rotate view tool in this top menu bar, the top of the screen, um, rotate view. And now if I just left click, hold down and drag the mouse, I can rotate view around. So I end up doing a lot of navigating in Rhino just by doing this. I left click, roll that view around like this, move objects around, and then I'm zooming in or out with the scroll wheel. And then um, a quick little shortcut to learn and become familiar with um, 
Now, if I want to um, rotate the view again, I don't necessarily have to go up now to, and click the um, uh, icon again, the school button again. Um, I can actually just right click now, and that will bring up the last command that I used. So now you can see the arrows change um, from just the standard arrow to the rotate view arrow. And then now I can left click again and rotate the view around. So that's just a first quick little nice shortcut. Um, it'll save you a lot of time while you're navigating around rather than going up and selecting that tool again. So just right click and left click, hold down, rotate, and then release the left click. And then scroll in and out. Um, if you ever get like disoriented, kind of lose your orientation in the viewport display, um, you can always just go back up to this top um, menu tab, right hand corner, right click again, set view, and then back to top. And that'll just snap you back into that default orientation for that viewport. Okay. Um, so the general layout of the Rhino workspace, um, there are a few of these toolbars um, organized around your viewport by default. On the left-hand side of the screen, more or less, these are all tools that are um, about drawing and modeling things. So I can make shapes up here, um, lines, surfaces, and volumes. So these are kind of my model making drawing tools on the left hand side. Along the top of the screen, these are my um, kind of navigation and um, uh, rendering tools by and large. And then you'll see up here at the top, um, there are a bunch of different tabs I can click, which will actually toggle through different sets of tools. But by default, we just have this standard set selected on the left hand side. Standard here. Um, but these are just different organizations of the toolbars and different tools that we can bring up. So we'll go back to standard here. Um, and then in the right hand side of the screen, there are some different menus here, and these give us information about the objects we're modeling here with the properties tab selected, or the layers tab. Um, this has some uh, tools for organizing our models. There's a help bar here if we want any help, um, uh, you know, want additional information about a tool or something. But basically, this is like information and organization over here on the right hand side. Um, up at the very top of the screen, we have what's called the command line. And anytime we click on a tool here to draw something or rotate view, anything like that, um, there we can also um, enter that tool, call up that tool by entering it in the command line here. And the command line is a really important part of the screen to just kind of pay attention to, just notice that. Because often, like say we're drawing a surface, um, in order to draw a surface, Rhino will want a few different pieces of information. And the command line, if we sort of forget what it is that we're supposed to enter next, the command line will be prompting us um, with the information that it needs to continue to draw that form. Um, there are some menu bars up at the very top. And these have basically duplicates of tools which are also located um, in this icon format in the toolbars. Um, so there's a lot of redundancy here, which is really useful. There are multiple places where you can get access to the same tool. So if you forget, you know, which little icon um, you're looking for, um, you can just um, start typing something in the command line and usually you can call up, it'll prompt um, with uh, what, what it thinks you're looking for in here or you can find the same tool up in the menu at the top of the screen. And then down at the very
very bottom of the workspace, um, there are some kind of drafting aids here. So we talked in class about like the OSNAP um, option, for example. And this is a really, really useful tool where it'll just help us with really precisely aligning and orienting objects to one another. So we'll talk about turning that on in a minute. So for now, um, let's start drawing some objects in the Rhino workspace. And um, what we're going to do is begin by drawing this virtual model of um, our crit space in the sculpture area. So we're going to do that by drawing a number of surfaces. Um, so we're going to use the surface tool which is located here in the toolbar on the left-hand side of the screen. You can just left-click on that surface tool and hold down for a moment. And then I'm going to come over to a tool called Rectangular Plane Corner to Corner. So you can see there are a bunch of different options now inside of that one surface tool with different options for ways of drawing surfaces. And then I'm going to left click once on that plane corner to corner. Um, alternately, I can call up that same tool that we're using by just typing plane, P-L-A-N-E, in the command line. So now notice, after I've selected that tool up in the command line, now it's prompting me with the information that it needs to begin drawing this surface. So it's asking me for the first corner of the plane, that location. And I can either just click somewhere in the workspace and it'll locate that point where my cursor is, um, is currently, or I can always enter numerical coordinates to define the location of that first plane. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna enter some coordinates and um, I want to put that first corner of the plane at just the zero, zero, zero point sort of origin in, inside of this, um, the, the grid, the virtual grid of um, the, the Rhino workspace. So I'm going to locate that point by just typing in on my keypad zero, comma, zero, comma, zero, and then enter. And now you can see it's locked in place, that first corner point. And then now, if we, if we look in the command line again, we can see it's prompting us with the other corner length. And that second corner length is, um, I'm just going to calculate this really quickly. Um, the second corner length is then decided it was the crit space is 18 feet long. So again, we're modeling in inches. So I'll multiply 18 by 12. And that means the other corner length is 216 inches. Okay. And then my third corner was, I believe it was 14 feet. So 14 times 12 is 168 inches. And then now we have our first rectangular surface, and this is basically representing the floor of our crit space in the sculpture area. So um, right now, the way it's being rendered is just as a, um, it's called a wireframe rendering. So I'm just seeing basically curves, black lines that are representing the edges of this form. I can change my rendering options to see it in a different way like these rendering options, um, viewport rendering options up here at the top of the workspace. And um, this little sort of shaded sphere, this one to the right of the blue sphere, if I just left click on that, it will change the viewport rendering to a shaded viewport. And now if I just rotate the view, I can see um, that that's actually not just lines, but those lines are actually representing a surface, which I've created. So there's my floor. So now you'll notice that um, 
rectangle that we just drew, by default, it's going to always be oriented, anything I draw will be oriented flat against the, um, what's called the C plane, which is this grid, this gridded plane, um, which is oriented respective to whatever viewport uh, I am currently drawing in or oriented towards. And what that means is that's just this label up here on the left hand side of the screen. So I'm using the top view and that is determining the orientation of this grid. So now if I want to draw a wall against the back here, which is oriented at a 90 degree angle to the floor, the easiest way to do that, one of the easiest ways to do that is just by changing our viewport orientation so that we flip that grid up at a 90 degree angle from its current orientation. And I can do that just by right clicking here on that tab in the top left hand corner of the Rhino workspace, going to set view, and then I'll go to front, front view. And if I use the rotate view tool again, now I can see that by moving from the top view to the front view, that's just flipped the orientation of my workspace grid here. So now I can draw the back wall of our um, brick space, again using the same tool, rectangular plane, corner to corner, or just by typing in plane in the command line. The first corner, I want to set that same 0, 0, 0 origin point. The second length is the length of that back wall again. So 216 inches or 18 feet. And then the height is about 8 feet 4 inches, um, which is approximately, which is 100 inches. Enter. So now we have the floor and then the back wall here. And then the second wall here we'll create by switching that viewport again. So now we're in the front view. We'll switch to the um, left view or right view. Doesn't matter, either one. Or the left view. Then I'll rotate the workspace again. Now I can see. Actually, I'm going to use the right view instead. Rotate view again. Move that over. Okay, so I'll move to the right view here. And then I can draw that last wall. Again, the plane command again, rectangular plane, corner to corner. The first point goes at 0, 0, 0, so 0, comma, 0, comma, 0, enter. And then the first wall, first length, which I'm being prompted for in the command line, again is 216. Oops, sorry. That's the scape. That wasn't right. It's actually 168 because that four foot wall. And then the height, same height, is 100. And then enter. Okay. So now we have our um, floor and two walls that corner of the workspace in this lecture area drawn. Um, notice I can select or deselect different objects in the workspace just by clicking on them, or if I draw a selection box over an entire object, it will select it from left to right. Notice if I just do that partially, it won't select it. But if I draw the selection box from right to left, even if I'm part way over the object, it will go ahead and select it and highlight it. Um, and then one more thing, we didn't actually do this in class, but um, I can show you it here. This will just help us to um, kind of keep our drawing nice and organized. Um, I've noticed a number of people in class having some problems with um, is a really common thing. Once we start getting more objects in the workspace, it's easy to accidentally click on something.
and then move it a little bit or misalign it, especially when we get more and more things kind of populating this, um, this space of the Rhino window. And so what we can do is we can just start by organizing this drawing a little bit. And the way we can do that is by just selecting all three of these planes that we've drawn already. And then if I just click in the Properties tab here on the um, right-hand side of the uh, Rhino workspace, and then in Layers, layer menu here, right now by, by default, these were drawn in what's called the default layer. And I'm just going to move those to another layer. So I'm just going to move them down, it's kind of arbitrary, but I'll move them down here to layer three. And you can see as soon as I do that, the color changes. They need to be selected, obviously, first. The color changes to the default color of that layer. And then now I'll switch over to the Layers tab. And drag these sliders over, drag the window, make it larger, smaller. And I'm going to move to Layer 3. And you'll see next to Layer 3 is a little light bulb. And if I toggle that on and off, that makes that layer visible or invisible. I'm going to leave it visible in this case. But then there's a little lock button. And I'm going to go ahead and just lock layer three. And now you'll notice if I try to click on those objects, the wall or the floor, I can't select them anymore. And that's just because that layer is locked. If I want to unlock it, I just click that button again. And now I can select objects in that layer. Um, but if I just go ahead and lock that layer three, that will just help us keep the drawing a little bit more organized. Now we won't accidentally move those walls over 